their speed. A blinding glare. A car crash. The final roar of an engine dying. The pain. Then you die. You wake up in your car. That dream again. The accident. It felt so real. The phantom pain of every fake injury pulsates through your body. The radio turns on by itself, snapping you back to reality. Dean Spencer's familiar voice drowns out the sound of your heart pounding. As the Canadian Civil War enters a critical phase, the U.S. government decided today to close the Mexican border to minimize the cost. The news is disturbing, but also somehow comforting. You've heard it before, but there's no time for a break. That thing after you, it's getting closer and closer. You take a deep breath, focus. There are two things you know for sure. First, you need to run. Never slow down, never stop for too long. Your fears are chasing you, and once they catch you, well, that's the end of the line. Second, you've got things to do. To challenge and defeat the greatest driver alive. The legendary, what's their name again? Never mind that now. That's your goal. Now, run.
hold on, hold on. This is it, folks. This is the hero we always needed but never deserved. The whole city's in a state of fucking paralysis because this chick just made the grandest entrance of her life. And I don't care that you're all so convinced she's a dude because that dude's a chick. Mark my words. She's like a jackalope. The interstate jackalope. Ooh, that has a nice ring to it. Hear that, American Press Association? You should hire me. Actually, no, don't. Ooh, ooh, a cookie! Guys, I just found a cookie! Been looking for you for a week, buddy! Oh, yeah. Oh, mother of God. That's delicious. It's like tasting sunshine. Shut the fuck up, Chirpwood! I'm tasting sunshine! You stopped by the side of the road trying to calm your breath. They didn't get you, not this time. What did that girl nickname you? The Interstate Jackalope? If only she knew you're running from more than just cops. Past mistakes, memories, disappointments. Like your first love was. You were young and stupid, weren't thinking straight. That's it. Nothing more to it. You moved on with no intention to look back. Not now, not ever. Time to go.
new Rainbow Revolution, your favorite pirate radio station with your favorite host, me, Riley. I'm like the best host there is, for real. How do I know that? I checked. All the others will bore you to death. Oh, we're gonna have a good time together. We can talk about anything. There's only one rule, no bullshit. So get ready, mama's gonna pull your guts out and feed them to the chihuahua. It's time for a revolution, assholes. You stop to stretch your legs and suddenly you find yourself in the middle of a conflict. The situation is dynamic, but you gather this much. A husband and a wife were just informed of a successful in vitro procedure. Then a particularly vicious pastor, supported by his most fervent followers, decide to let the pair know what they think about their happy moment. You jump out of the car and get in the preacher's face. No need to punch him though. Words are enough to shut him up. You finally find a parking spot, but before you can exit the car, some guy gets in from the passenger side. He's furious. About fucking time. Alejandro's waiting. You don't even know where the place is? Jeez. Take a left. Intrigued, you follow his directions and end up at a photo studio. Turns out they mistook you for a model, and you're going along with it. Why not? They're paying cash. You'll try to look. Mas emotion. Are you a professional or not? Alejandro shouts repeatedly. When you're done, they pay you a little. You got a bail, though. The real model finally arrived. terrible storm forces you to slow down. You see a bizarre scene. A man running across the field pushing... Wait, is that a shopping cart? His mother's name is Anita. She's calm now, but used to be unpredictable. Tried to hurt James when he was eight. Now she's got maybe a month left. 
Cancer. James wants to show her the world, rewrite the past before it's too late. After the storm, he dropped them off at a bus stop. That's when James realizes he's lost his wallet. He needs money, so he offers up Anita's meds as payment. You meet them wandering around an abandoned drive-in theater, an eccentric rock star and her girlfriend, a new wave poet, the more talented half, some say. You know them from the news, sex scandals, drugs, great music and gigs escalating into full-blown anti-war riots. There's a wedding underway. You see the priest, the grandma, and a few friends. A lone wanderer would make a splendid ring bearer, says the rock star. The poet looks hesitant, scared even. It's clear none of this was her idea. Sure, she's in love. Delaware. I'm a secretary at an advertising company and a media 
awesome amateur. <laughs> um, I love poetry, dogs, and pole dancing. I'm a Leo. <laughs> Roar! <laughs> um, I can invite you to my apartment here in Elsmere and show you my whip collection, but uh, yeah, I'd also like to visit your love wagon, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but how do you know he's single? Uh, call it a hunch. Your first instinct is to run, but you're curious what's with that weird-looking cop. I don't want to lock you up, he starts. What I do want is to prove to everyone I'm still the fastest cheetah in the county. One fair race, or I'll make life difficult for you. Win, and I'll tell my guys to ease off your back. Focus. You can win this. On the air, one, two, one, two, mic on, on, steaming block of coffee, two shoulders, one, reach, 
quick and dirty whisper. Hello, hello, folks. Uh, Joylene Somerset, and you are listening to Simple Living FM. Uh, looking for house maintenance tips? <laughs> we'll find them here. Business advice? Not from me. Uh, hope to hear one of my cooking lessons. <laughs> you are too late for that. But if you want to know personal details from a middle-aged woman's life going through a divorce, well, then you, my friend, have tuned into the right place. And if you suck a, a stick around, then I, uh... Oh, Probably wondering how's our favorite driver doing well I'm gonna tell you cuz I know things I have my ways you know like I'm just like super duper likable like I'm so fucking likable that an old lady bought me a pretzel the other day with chocolate real sweet and then she told me about her grandkids like one of them's in prison the other threatened her with like a machete wait was it a machete Oh, right, the driver. Uh, pig swarmed her, but she got away easy. The pursuit ended in a spectacular clusterfuck, Sheriff Sir. We are sorry. We will piss on each other now and jerk off without breaking eye contact. <laughs> <laughs>
The headquarters of California's KCDQ-FM is still occupied by the famed radio host, J.C. Leonard. As previously reported, Leonard has stormed the KCDQ building, locked himself inside the studio, and has been broadcasting a vulgar comedy show called Meltdown FM. Guns were initially reported, but we have not been able to confirm if Leonard has taken hostages or if the police are involved. In recent years, J.C. Leonard has become one of the most popular radio personalities in the country, awarded with two Golden Microphone Awards. He disappeared from public life three weeks ago after an on-air mental breakdown during which he confessed to drug abuse, pornography addiction, sodomy, marital infidelity, and hatred towards dogs. You know this image all too well. Black teens becoming suspects simply because of the color of their skin and a hothead cop determined to lock up or shoot down some dangerous criminals, even if it means ignoring the evidence. Textbook racial profiling. Yes, the system's broken, but you can do something about it in this case. Provoke the cop and hit the gas. The kids will disappear while the man in blue will occupy himself chasing the infamous interstate jackalope. Star's girlfriend. Tanaka Misaki. Yes. She's a smart cookie. 
Years ago, I should have given the same advice to my soon-to-be wife. Run, darling, run, and don't look back. Full disclosure, my marriage was a train wreck in slow motion. And you know me, right? Living with JC is like living with an open limb fracture that rots and stinks, but you still won't chop it off. The whole concept of marriage is psychotic anyway. You commit to sharing your life with a strange... Fucking why? I mean, so many things could go wrong. Best case scenario, you love each other to the end. Do you really need a vow for that? Stopping by the smoking crater, you expected to find a space rock, not a bruised teenager in a tattered cape. The girl smiles dimly. This may sound odd, but I need to use your car battery. She mumbles with a strong Irish accent. Before you manage to collect your thoughts, the girl stands up, brushes past you, pops the hood and touches the battery connectors. In exchange, for what exactly, she offers you some rest or a golden coin, your choice. Hustle and bustle, clouds of steam and smoke, roaring engines, a smell of oil, cheap beer, and good grill. You used to love these places. No wonder you immediately found a common language with three truckers occupying the nearby table. But one of them is drunk and quickly starts taunting you. You know his type, works too hard, doesn't earn enough, and thinks badly of himself. Is it really worth getting into a fight?
An old pickup parked on the roadside and the driver leaning on it have both seen better days. At first sight, you can see that they're waiting far too long for a Samaritan that'll help them with some gasoline. If you share with this poor bastard, there's a risk you'll soon find yourself in the same position. Your journey is quiet for a change. The road ahead is clear of any dangers. The weather is nice. You can forget your worries and enjoy the ride while listening to the radio broadcasts. Sounds tempting, doesn't it? Space travel's a funny thing. Before 1961, we feared that the cosmic void was full of nightmares and immortal spiteful gods, plotting to deprave humanity, hating all life, counting the sins of every single human being. The best case scenario was, there's this almighty white dude eager to cast fire and brimstone on his worshippers for crimes of extramarital sex, or some other petty stuff. But then, enter Comrade Yuri. He goes into space and tells us there are no gods out there, and surprise, surprise, turns out that makes it even more scary. Now we know we're alone, because cause we always have been, and always will be. Just the, the, the silly, meaningless species in an infinite vastness of indifferent void. Oh, fuck. on The Amazing Adventures of Electro Gal Show. Disguised as reporter Mara West, the Electro Gal is sent to true heaven, the marvelous Sky City. Here, she uncovers a sinister conspiracy against Mr. President himself. Oh no! The League of Midnight wants to crash true heaven into the White House. But before she can warn the FBI, our heroine is attacked by her arch enemy, the wicked Dr. Lucius Green, the malevolent leader of the League. And what's this? Dr. Greed wields a secret weapon, the Spear of Valatorium, forged from a rare metal extracted on the Forgotten Moon. Bested and badly wounded, Electro Gal falls from true heaven and crashes in the middle of nowhere. Her superpowers are almost gone. She needs electricity. Will someone save her? Okay, okay, the meds are kicking in, so hear me out before I go all stupid fucking happy again. There's really only one thing I need you to take away from my little show. There's no purpose, no God, no Yahweh, no Allah, no karma, no destiny. There's just this, this nonsense. A collection of biochemical reactions that by pure trickery drive us forward, always forward, perpetuating this preposterous circus we call life. Spreading futility and suffering from generation to generation, sentencing millions, billions, to participate in this monstrous, vicious cycle of misery, disappointment, and death. This species to which we belong will one day disappear to the benefit of the planet. I think of this with pleasure, you know?
You bump into him by accident as you get out of the car and step onto the sidewalk. The man gets pissed, blowing the whole thing out of proportion. Are you blind? You can't park here. It's a sidewalk, you moron. A sidewalk! While the wife tries to calm him down as they walk away. You notice something shiny on the ground and pick it up. It's a very old-fashioned, heart-shaped locket with two photos inside. It's that couple, no doubt about that. You'd get good money for it. He should have been nicer. Right?
we're on board the L train and we see this 40 something dude sitting down next to this blonde who's there by herself. Hey, sweetheart, what you reading? Why so sad? The girl's like clearly uncomfortable, but too polite to tell him to beat it. I see him clutch for me and I'm so over it. So fucking over it. Me and Amy, we grab him. I'm fucking furious. Guy's clearly scared. <laughs> I spell it out to him how fucking rude that was and kick him out at the next stop. The girl, she's in shock seeing girls standing up to a dude like that. Well, ladies, yes, you can. They don't listen, make up. <laughs> As you drive up to the meeting spot, you're almost surprised to find someone actually waiting for you in this forgotten corner of the world. You can't see the driver, but the car seems familiar. It's probably the same model as yours. Good. The duel will be fair. The greatest driver alive. Well, not for long, you tell yourself with a smile. Suddenly, the opponent rushes forward. The race is on.
this on your own. A lone wolf, huh? You're not fooling anyone. We both know that you can't stand being on your own. Humans tend to get lonely without a partner. And loneliness leads to desperation. I can see inside of your mind, Jackalope. I see it clear as day. What just happened? That glare, the crash, the voice. Did you lose? Between the questions popping up in your head, there's also a glimpse. Your past life comes to you. You were a racer, and a great one at that. A true champion. You loved and were loved, but you fucked up. Betrayed those most important to you. And once they were gone, you didn't want to go on without them. Burned out and overwhelmed by loneliness, you wanted to get away and... There's more to that memory, but your time is up for now. You die. 